In a recent short, I talked about the German word for a hangover and mentioned its amusing etymology. Of course, the internet wouldn't be the internet if I didn't then have lots of people pointing out that I was very clearly wrong. And if you were one of those, you had a point, but let me explain. YouTube shorts have to be less than 60 seconds long, which doesn't give me much time to go into any detail. And my German Word of the Week videos are intended to be fun and entertaining, which doesn't mean they're not supposed to be true. I mean, they are, but they're not supposed to be lectures. The truth is, we can't say for definite what the origin of this term is. Why does the German word Kater mean both a tomcat and a hangover? No idea, but there are a couple of theories, and I just picked the one I thought was the funniest and the easiest to explain. You see, usually new words and phrases are used in speech long before anybody ever thinks to write them down, so most of the time we are just guessing. This is true even of very new words. For example, we have no idea whether the word Belfi was invented in Britain or America. The explanation that I used comes from ah, the 24th edition of Friedrich Kluger's Etymological Dictionary of the German Language. Ha. It quotes a text from 1575 saying that a certain type of beer was known as a tomcat because if you drank too much of it the next morning it would be scratching inside your head. As an explanation, it was far more appealing than any of the others and perfect for a YouTube short, so I took it and ran with it. But that is just not good enough for a serious discussion of the word's etymology. Unfortunately, Kluger doesn't give a definite source for that quote. I tried to track it down, but all I could find was other people quoting Kluger. So that didn't help. The problem with this theory is that the quote is from the 16th century, but the use of Carter to mean a hangover isn't recorded until the 19th century. That's a 300-year gap, which is enough for most lexicographers to seriously doubt Kluger's theory. In defense of Kluger, though, it is entirely possible for something to completely disappear from the written record, but still be handed down orally from generation to generation. An example of this is the curious case of the English nursery rhyme Browbender. This was a very popular rhyme right up until 1788 when it suddenly disappeared from the written record. In the 1940s and 50s, folklorists Peter and Iona Opie were trying, without success, to find out exactly what happened to it. And then one night they overheard the nanny singing it to their daughter. Browbender had survived it just wasn't being printed in books anymore. Which is not to say that Kluger is correct, although he might be. But there are some other theories that we really need to take a look at. And as it happens, the Association for the German Language has already done most of that work for me. What a stroke of luck. One possibility is Katzenjammer, which was being used in a similar sense in the 18th century. According to the Brothers Grimm, and Yes, those brothers grim. The word came to mean the feeling you get listening to bad music. And then, by extension, the feeling you get waking up in the morning after partying too hard the night before. Lending weight to this theory is Goethe's use of the term Katzenjammer. But what I personally find a little bit difficult is that the Katze in Katzenjammer is a generic word for any cat, whereas the word for a hangover is Kater, which is specifically a tomcat. And so we turn to the most popular explanation, the word Katar. This is first recorded in German in the 16th century from the Latin word for a cold. Latin in turn got it from the Greek word for downward flow for reasons I'd rather not think too much about. Oh. Apparently, in the 19th century, the word Qatar was being used to mean just generally feeling unwell. And at the time, in the dialect of Saxony, it was being pronounced something more like Carter. So maybe that's all there is to it. But there is more. Not so long before that, Carter was being used in certain idioms. For example, people were not merely in love, they were 
as smitten as a tomcat, presumably because an uncustrated tom will caterwaul quite loudly if it catches the scent of a female cat in heat. Similarly, for some unknown reason, people who were recovering from intoxication were said to be taking their tomcat for a walk. Yeah, there are some idioms that just don't seem to have any kind of logical explanation. Now, if you were to ask which theory is correct, then my response would have to be, don't know. Could be more than one of them. You see, one phrase you often see in articles like this is, may have been influenced by. It's very easy to imagine a conversation like, for example, this. So why weren't you at the lecture this morning? Oh, uh, I just had a Qatar. Oh, a Qatar. Yeah, you mean you were taking your cat for a walk. Mm -hmm. In summary, nobody knows for sure. There are several theories and I chose the one I liked the best so I could turn it into a joke. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more videos like this one then please don't forget to leave a comment. In fact, even if you don't, leave a comment. I mean, just leave a comment, it's fine. <laughs>